Leslie Morgan Stanger is the author of Crazy Love, an autobiographer who routinely abused and threatened by her husband throughout her marriage. November 2012, at TEDx in Rainier, Washington. I am here today to talk about a disturbing question, which also have a disturbing answer. The question I'm going to tackle on is the question that everyone asks. Why would a woman stay with a man who beats her? I am not a social worker or an expert in domestic violence. I am just a woman with a story to tell. I was 22. I had just graduated from Harvard College. I had gotten my first job as a writer and an editor and a writer for the 17 magazines in the New York City. I got my first apartment, my first little green American Express card. But I have a big secret. My secret is that the man I love more than anybody on earth held a gun to my head, threatened me more times than I cannot even remember. I am here today to tell you a story of crazy love, a physical trap disguised as love, one that millions of women, even few men, fall into each year. I met Connor on a rainy cold January night. He sat next to me in a New York City subway, and he started to chat me up. He told two things up to me. One is that him too had just graduated from Ivy League school, so that he's now working in an impressive Wall Street bank. But what gave me the biggest impression at the first meeting was not uh, about his impressive job, but he was funny, smart, and he looked like a farm boy. One of the smartest things Connor did at the beginning was that he created an illusion of trust between us by showing me that I'm the dominant partner in the relationship. He did this especially by idolizing me. He loved everything about me. <coughs> that I was smart, that I'd gone to Harvard, and I'm passionate with helping teenage girls and my job. He even created an atmosphere of trust between us by revealing his biggest secret, which is that starting at age four, he has been severely abused by his stepfather. And the abuse, uh, the abuse had gotten so bad, he had to drop out of school at age 10. <coughs> Although he's smart and hardworking, he almost spent 20 years rebuilding his life again. There was not even a single sign of violence or control or even anger in Connor at the beginning. And I didn't know the first step in any domestic violence relationship is to seduce and charm the victim. And I also didn't know the second step in any domestic violence relationship is to isolate the victim. Connor came back home one Friday night. He told me he quit his job, his dream job. I asked him why he quit his job. He told me that he feels so loved and safe living with me, that he wants to start a new life again with me in a tiny town in New England. So I quit my job, and I left Manhattan with him the next day. I didn't know I was walking head first into this carefully laid psychological, financial, and physical trap. And the next step in the domestic violence relationship is to introduce the pattern of violence and see she, how she reacts. After we moved to the tiny town in New England, you know, the place where he's supposed to feel safe, so safe living with me, he bought three guns. 
The first one he kept in his glove compartment in our car. And the second one he kept under our pillow. And the third one he kept in his pocket all the time. I asked him why he bought three guns. He told me that he bought these guns because of the trauma he experienced at a young age. But to me, those three guns were really a message that I know I'm in a great danger of every moment, of every day. Connor first physically attacked me five days be before our marriage. It was 7 a.m. I was trying to finish up my working, uh, writing assignment on the computer, and I got frustrated. Connor used my frustration as an excuse to hold both of his hands on my neck, so tight that I cannot even scream or, or breathe. And the violence continued on our honeymoon. I was driving by myself uh, in a car and uh, trying to find a secret beach, and I got lost. Connor got so mad at me that he hit one side of my heart, uh, my head so hard that the other side of my head repeatedly hit against the driver's window. The violence continued in the next two and a half years of our marriage. So go back to my question. Why did I stay? Because I know the man I love the most will kill me if I left him. But I break the silence. I told everyone, the police, my neighbors, my friends, my family, total strangers. I am here today because you all helped me. I was able to walk out of, out of my crazy love by breaking the silence. And it's, it is my way of helping other victims. And it is my final request from you. You have the power to end domestic violence by just shine a spotlight on it. By recognize the early sign of domestic violence, show other victims a safe way out. Together, we can make our own beds our dinner, our life of safe and peaceful oasis they should be. Thank you.